I've got a very interesting one today. This is an image I was lucky enough to work on for a Redditor called Interested Guy Wiley, who kindly gave me permission to share the process uh, that I used to clean up this picture of his great grandfather. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of damage, particularly right through the eyes of his great grandfather, um, which is always a challenge because you're not quite sure what he looked like. I did ask for any other photos and I was supplied with an image of him when he was uh, a young teenager, which gave me some clues as to what to aim for. Now, as you can see here, as usual, I'm starting with the remove tool and the remove tool is great for removing as much of this damage as I can that I feel confident in letting it uh, interpret. So a lot of these smaller scratches and these smaller runs I can, uh, I can do quite easily with this brush. Now this footage is sped up, I think 300%. This obviously took me a lot, lot longer in real time. Not quite happy with the way that finger just blended into his leg there, but I'll uh, come back to that later. You can see sometimes I work quite widely and then sometimes like this I come in with a very narrow brush and that's because I really want to preserve as many of those details like what the edge of the cuff of her shirt looked like, things like that. I don't want to uh, interpret that stuff too much if I can help it. Now it's at this point that I realise I'm getting a little confused by, by some of the colour, some of the sepia tarnishing and blemishes. So I uh, quickly desaturate the image and that just reduces it to a simpler palette of, of tone that I can work with and, and see what I'm doing a little more clearly. So here you can see when I clean the heel with the remove tool, it keeps sampling kind of a mid-tone grey on that dark heel, no matter what I do. So this is one case where I would just sample that colour and with a simple brush tool paint a little bit of that colour in to restore the heel. Now I'm kind of working around the image, leaving the real trouble spots just for now, because I kind of feel like if I'm going to use generative fill or any of those tools to try and persuade the AI to make a choice, I want it to have the cleanest image possible for it to make its assumptions with. And so I'm not sure 
if that's right or wrong. I just feel like if I can reduce as many of these scratches, even eating to some of the larger ones on either side of the faces, then when it comes time to uh, use AI to sort of make up for the losses in the image, then I'm not expecting it to do too much heavy lifting. I can intervene a lot more before I, I get it to make its assumptions. Quite often the remove tool struggles to remove a segment of a large scratch. So what I'll do is clone a little tone either end of it like that to break it up so that when I do a, a remove tool on that area, it doesn't try to give me a different variation of the scratch. It knows I actually intend for it to go away entirely. And so I'll do the same here. But this time I'm going to select with the lasso tool this area and then ask Generative Fill to generate what it thinks was there. So this tool queries Adobe's vast stock library and tries to, to rebuild what it thinks is under that Lasso Select tool. And it always benefits to have a little bit of a wider selection so it can see a little bit more of the face inside its selection to make a choice. Now those three weren't amazing, but the first one seems to be the best. Now that I'm happy with my selection, I'm just going to duplicate that selection and keep looking for other options. No, I think I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is keep that one on a second layer just in case. Well, actually, there's no reason to. I don't know why I did. I think, yeah, I'll get rid of that. That's good. I don't intend to use this generative fill layer completely as it is. I think it's good, but what I want to do is make sure I'm retaining as much of the original material as possible. So that was pretty successful. I'm just uh, returning to the remove tool just to flatten out some of that skin tone.
Again, I, I can't really rely on remove tool to do some of these areas. So what I'm doing is defaulting back to an older technique of just using the clone brush and selecting other parts of the image that have a similar texture to the area where there's loss and then cloning some of that detail back in. I particularly want to protect these buttons and the edge of, of the boy's collar. Make sure that uh, I don't just lose them in some AI guess. I'm going to clone the button from the top down onto the button below, trying to give it a little drop shadow, some of that sense of, of, of having uh, dimension, and also try and restore some of the seam of his shirt underneath that scratch. Now with this uh, tear reduced to just an island, I'm going to give generative fill a try. But as you can see, it failed and that's because for some reason the Adobe AI servers determined that I was trying to do something illegal, potentially something rude. Uh, sometimes when it thinks you're trying to uh, restore or, or generative fill an area that uh, might be not safe for work or whatever, it, it does actually fail. So that wasn't very successful. As you can see though, the remove tool did a pretty good job of doing what I was hoping anyway. Now some more clone painting here, just trying to restore the collar of this young girl. And also just to sort of work around with the remove tool, just some of those areas around her eyes before I, I try to build a new eye for her on the, uh, on the screen right hand side of her face. Really trying to flatten out the tone so that uh, I can give AI the best possible chance of giving me something useful. All right, let's see what Generative Phil thinks her eye should look like. A quick marquee, hit Generate. <laughs> uh, um, we'll go again. Still not great. But you know, it's one of those things I've got to look at an eyeball like that and say, is that useful? Does that give me the right idea? Or do I go again? I can just keep hitting generate as often as I like. And as you can see here, I'm trying a larger selection in the hope that giving it a little bit more real estate it can find a better spaced eye and that one's actually pretty good. That was actually uh, a successful one I was very happy with that one. So turning it on and off you can see it's not exactly the same. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to go into the layer onto the mask layer for that generative fill and I'm going to start painting back to the original image. I don't care that I'm actually revealing the original damage in her eye because I'm going to work back again over that later. So now I'm restoring the generative fill layer just where I want it to, to, to restore the damage rather than take over the whole eye. So you can see I'm trying to be as sensitive as I can to the real material underneath. One of the things I really like is on the other eye there's a little ping, a little highlight, uh, and the new eye looks a little flat. So what I'm going to do is, using the clone brush, I'm just going to create a new layer and just clone that little highlight, that little ping, and I think it just makes those eyes look like they belong. Or at least it makes that eye look like it belongs. Okay, so some more remove tool feeling pretty bold here, just taking a big piece of her cheek like that, but uh, 
And it does a pretty good job. And again, you can see I'm going to clone away some of that tear with the hope that I'm breaking that damage into smaller chunks that the AI can have a better guess about how to, how to correct. All right, some funny guesses again. <laughs> again, I'm not looking to replace this entirely. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's a little problematic. But what I'm looking for are, you know, do any of them restore her shoulder nicely? Do any of them restore her hair nicely? Do any of them give us a piece of a mouth I can use rather than the whole thing? So I'm going to use this one here. And... I'm going to only keep it for the shoulder and for this side of her face as well. I think it's done a pretty good job, but I'm not super happy with the mouth. So I'm just going to use what it worked out just for this part of her face. Now to see if I can generate a better mouth. Just isolating that area hopefully will make the uh, generative fill make some better choices or at least not be as confused by everything else I'm asking it to do. I think this mouth is pretty good. It's not everything I want, but it's uh, pretty good. So. Again, going into the mask, I can paint back the girl's original nose, her original cheeks. The top lip I can keep. All that stuff wasn't damaged, so there's no need to, to lose it. All I'm trying to do is repair that little lower lip. And you can kind of see that if I just restore that little piece, you get what feels pretty authentic. And it's uh, not changing the shape of her mouth. It's not making her into somebody else. Hopefully it's, it's keeping as much of her character as, as I can possibly uh, squeeze out of it. All right, the big kahuna. <laughs> you can see I've left this one to last. So, uh, okay, let's generate it, and see how it goes. There you go, that one was pretty awesome actually. Not that one, that one. That looks great. So, let's, uh, I just don't, I always make a clone if I'm happy with it, just in case I do something stupid and I can't get back to what I had and then I invariably realize I didn't need to keep it and, you know. <laughs> so I'll paint, again away most of what the generative fill came up with and then painting back the bits I need which you know I guess is probably most of it again but eh, it's a process just just to make sure that I'm not throwing away any original data
Now I'll do a small levels adjustment just to knock some of the, the flatness out of the image, bring a little bit more contrast into it. So what I like to do is put a, an invert layer in and for some reason I can see the variations in tone a lot better on an invert layer. So underneath that I can use my remove tool and just paint in areas to try and flatten out some of those grades. You can see at the hard left is really patchy uh, and it was a lot harder to see the other way around. I don't know why it's easier to see that way but it's it's a little trick I've stumbled across that actually really helps me. spending a little time just flattening out some of the skin tone. I don't want their, their limbs to become featureless, but I do want to take some of the variation out. Good. Now I'm going to address this luminance change by this girl's face. So putting a levels adjustment layer in, and painting into the mask, I'm just going to introduce that levels adjustment subtly. And again, flipping into the invert layer, I can paint those levels and the mask of that layer a little bit more easily, see what I'm doing. And then I'll just remove this little section here with the uh, remove tool. Okay. Now, I've gone back to Neural Filters. I'm just going to see if processing the Photo Restoration filter at the end is helpful at all. And it does do quite a cartoony kind of look on the faces. Not super happy, but what it does do is it flattens out some of the grain, particularly above the boy's head on the wall. So I'm going to keep some of that and just use a mask to isolate what the, the um, Neural Filter did just to the wall and flatten it out a tiny bit. Now I'm pretty much done. The only thing I really want to do now is even out the look of the image by adding a tiny bit of noise. Now it just sort of, that's a, sort of a, a Gaussian noise and it's set to monochrome and I set it to around two. Uh, the reason that I do that is just because you've painted and dodged and smudged and done a whole bunch of stuff and there's some original grain as you can see on the top of the boy's hair and there's bits of, of variation in the uh, in the fine grain. So a little bit of grain applied after all, not only makes it look a little bit more originally filmic of the period, but it also has a, as a way of sort of unifying the work. And so there we go. I hope you found that interesting. I had an absolute ball fixing this image. It's uh, it's really what I love doing. Uh, so a special thanks to interested Guy Wiley for allowing me to, uh, to work on this image. I hope you all learned something. I always learn something every time I do one of these and every time 
I do want to feel like I improve. So uh, thanks very much for joining me. Okay, see you next time.